Hey everyone, Krista Moser here. Today I thought I'd show you how to turn your scraps into a fun little quilt. I've done these baby quilts here with all these scraps that I just had in my closet. And I've had so many people ask questions as I was posting progress pictures on Instagram. I thought I'd do a video to show you how I did it and something that you can actually use to, to clean out your own closet, no matter what size the scrap is. So I've got here some strips some extra pieces. The smaller the better, because then you really feel like you're getting some value out of whatever you've got laying around. I actually went through and I collected colors that I liked together. What you'll see is um, some yellow, some turquoise, some coral, and then I use gray. I like to use gray a lot and if there is a stripe or a graphic print in there, even better. I think it adds a lot of detail. I've got some stripes here. Stripes here. No matter what size those strips are. Now most of these are full length strips or close to it. And what I did is I just went ahead and sewed the strips together that were about the same length. No matter how wide they were. Um, I've got some here that are really, really kind on the small side. But... I even took and sewed some strips, some chunks together to make myself a strip that was just a little bit longer. And what I've got here are some that are about the same length. Starting my next, you can see, seams everywhere. Don't worry about that. It won't really be noticed once you go to do the actual uh, assembly process. So we've done that process here with a little chunk, slightly bigger here, and I've got seams in quite a few different places. So what I do when I have seams like this where, where I've joined some smaller bits together, I actually turn my stitch length on my sewing machine down to about 2.0, which is kind of on the small side, so hopefully you don't have to pick your stitches out but it really helps to secure these when I'm joining smaller bits together to get kind of a usable piece. If you've turned your seam, your, your stitch down to about 2.0, then you won't have the risk of those things popping open, especially when we're gonna sew them all together and then uh, cut pieces from them. So I'll show you that process here. I cut six and a half inch triangles from my piece. So this, I sewed all these together until it was at least six and a half inches. I don't mind if it's a little over, you can kind of trim your excess off, but you will see, I'm gonna lay this ruler. Now I'm using a 60 degree diamond ruler from Creative Grids. This is the original size. The six and a half inch line here, my flat tip across the other end. If you have the mini ruler, that will cut up to a four and a half inch triangle. So if you've got the mini ruler, it'd be a little more like, like this size here. But we're, we're going to use the original for this. And here I am just going to trim and trim. There it is, one whole block. Now, like I said, I turned my stitch length down to a 2.0. And so every one of these seams coming to the edge has less of a chance of popping open when, when pressure is put on it during the piecing process and final assembly. You don't want, this is a biased edge here, and you don't want, if you have to give it a tug or anything, you don't want those seams to pop open. And any seams that are kind of in the middle, they'll be nice and secured with that. So that gives me one block out of just a little bit of scraps. Here I have a section, it's a little wider. I think what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut the end off straight and I'll show you how I get my end caps. Here I am, just straight like that, removing the little bits. Now, I'm going to line the ruler up with the six and a half inch line across the bottom edge. Now, this ruler has three dashed lines down the middle. It's actually just got one solid line and then one dashed line on either side. So I'm gonna line it up with the dashed line that's to the left of the center line, and that will give me a seam allowance. 
And you'll notice this strip set is a little bit wider than six and a half. So I am just gonna go like this and take that tip off. Now this piece here will work to fill in the edges of my rows. We'll get to that here in a minute. Now I'm gonna turn the ruler around, six and a half inch line across the top, just like that. And I'm going to cut here. And I'm just going to flatten that tip. So you can see how versatile that is. I've got some other seams in here. They've all been pretty secured though. So next cut, I think I'll get a couple more blocks out of this. A six and a half inch line. And Just like that. Now it looks like I might get one more of those half units. So I'm just going to line this up here where the fabric goes along the edge of the mat. Cut the end off straight. And I'm going to turn this piece around to do like I did before. With my straight edge, my six and a half inch line. Just like that. Another edge piece that'll fill in from the side. Now for the background, I used just a solid. Cut this as a six and a half inch strip. And I'm gonna do the same process that I just did with those scrappy bits. I'm gonna cut the end off straight, my salvages. And then I'll be working with the triangle again. This now I've got this fabric folded. There's two layers here. And what this will get me is a mirror image cut. Because this is important. You have the ends to fill in on both the right and left of the quilt. So what you see here, that piece there. And this piece here, the mirror image cut for both of those. You want to keep those as a set. Same thing, we'll turn this around. Of course, if you have a lot of scraps, you could make your strip sets wider and get bigger triangles out of them. Just turning. We should get four cuts out of each strip set, just like this. Just, that gets us a row worth. Now from the center section, you can open it up. You wanna press that out, you'll get one more triangle cut from that, just like that. Wanna press that before I cut it. We'll get to that here in a minute during layout. Now what you'll notice here, like I said before, no matter how wide your strips are, this strip was probably less than an inch and then sewn next to one that was probably about an inch. So whatever you have laying around, just sew them together because the, the arrangement doesn't really matter. And you'll see here, the more the variety, the funner it is. And even on this one, I didn't even have strips. I just sewed a bunch of just random pieces together until I could get a six and a half inch triangle out of it. So that's a really fun way to use up scraps, no matter how small they are. If you are really, um, really hurting for scraps, you could even sew something like that together and get a little extra piece out of it. What I wanted to show you is the layout. So this is the way these pieces go together. We have our background. Of course, you don't have to make it just a baby quilt. You can make these rows long and wide and um, make yourself a bigger quilt. Notice what I'm doing here. I have my straight up grain edge, which is opposite of my flat tip here. And so that means that these edges are going to be biased. Now, of course, you could turn your triangles, but 
but for consistency and to make it easier to piece, this would be my suggestion. Flat tip at one side, straight of grain edge at the other, and then you're going to take your pieced triangles, which probably will have a straight of grain edge, depending on what scraps you used, and then your flat tips. That way, just for, just for variety's sake, let's put this one here. Um, that way, when you go to sew these seams here, these are biased edges. Both are biased edges. So bias meets bias, bias meets bias, and bias meets bias. And the advantage of that is when you go to piece these, both will have a little bit of give. Both edges will stretch together. And that's great because they will, they will give each other room as you're piecing. And then what you end up with is your top and bottom edges will be straight of grain edges. So they won't have a lot of give to them. So when you go to actually sew your rows together, your top edge meets the bottom edge of the next strip and or the next row, and those two edges won't have a lot of stretch and so you'll get a lot better matchup points as you're, as you're sewing your rows together because all the stretching happens between the triangle, the piece triangle and the background triangle. So it's really, um, just a thing to keep in mind. And here's the way the background edge piece. Then we have the edge. We would have another edge here, probably another triangle, and then an edge, just like this. Fun, huh? All the scraps in the world, you can make use of them. These are baby size quilts, and what I've done is turn this into a PDF download. It's a free pattern. We've called it Many Morsels Scrap Quilt. So you can just dig through your closet, find colors you like together, start arranging them into strip sets that roughly are about six and a half or a little over, and then just start cutting some triangles and background triangles and see what you come up with. So that PDF download, we're going to link to it in the bottom of this description of this video, and it just gives you the background cuts, what you need for strips, how many cuts you will get. Now this is for the baby size quilt. So like I said, you can cut bigger bigger triangle units and do the same process. You can make more rows, make them wider. It's just a fun process. I hope you found something inspiring here. Thanks for watching.